what is good for an individual might not always be good for the economy as a whole. This is one of the first things we learned while being trained as economists. But how? Often it is assumed that the well-being of a firm or an individual, or in more technical terms, a micro-entity, definitely implies that it will result in the well-being of the economy as a whole. But this fails when we talk about savings. Hi everyone, my name is Ria Kaslewal and today we are going to talk about the paradox of thrift. Imagine being at bad times like the present and to grapple with the future uncertainty or instability, you start to increase your savings. This is one of the most sound ways to proceed and plan your finances. Seeing you, your friends, families and even your neighbor start to increase their savings. And as the plausibility of a future uncertainty starts to grip everybody, many, many people start to increase their savings. This results in a nationwide rise in the savings rate of an economy. To understand what this might cause, let's understand what you do with the money that you earn. You spend your money on food, other essentials or the other things that you want to consume or you either save it for a future uncertainty or an investment opportunity. So what you do with your money is either you save it or you spend it. Now, if you increase either of these things, that means that the other thing is bound to decrease. Similarly, when you start to increase your savings, it means that your consumption starts to go down. And when there's a rise in the nationwide savings, that implies that there's a decrease in the nationwide consumption. That is, aggregate consumption starts to fall. When aggregate consumption starts to fall, it means that many people have started to consume less. And that implies that there are lower sales for firms. When there are lower sales for companies, it means that their revenue starts to decrease. When revenue starts to decrease due to lower sales, firms decrease their production, decrease wages, and also fire their employees to cut costs. With increased wage cut and increased unemployment, people start consuming further lesser and start saving furthermore and this cycle continues. Hence, while being thrifty in the lieu of a rainy day might be good for an individual, it is not that good for the economy as a whole, giving us the paradox of thrift. The reason it is called a paradox is that the entire motive of saving more is to have enough to spend for a rainy day and that becomes pointless because when despite saving more, people's income start falling, the aggregate savings anyway go down and might not even increase because savings are after all a fraction of people's income and a weaker economy, people are bound to have weaker incomes as well. This paradox was first introduced by Bernard Mendeville in 1714 and was popularized by John Maynard Keynes. But why is the paradox relevant to us? Well, given the downturn that India is facing right now due to the coronavirus and the future uncertainty that grapples us all, many fear that India is in the path to the paradox of thrift. Not only have many people lost their jobs and are facing wage cuts, but there's a fear that many more will be engulfed in unemployment and income losses. To add to that fear is what seems like a never-ending battle with the virus. What this would result in is a decreased consumption and decreased savings on an aggregate. Thus, the virtue of savings results in a vice for the macroeconomy and public at large. But what does this mean? Should you start saving less to save the economy? Well, as heroic as that sounds, that is not the long-term solution. Eventually, the only way to get out of this paradox of thrift is to remove the economy from the slowdown. And the only way the economy will be removed from the slowdown is through more targeted and increased government spending and provision of welfare schemes. To conclude, always remember what is good for an individual might not always be good for the economy as a whole. Thank you.